Okay, here we go. The book of Revelation, chapter 5. Let's dig in. Objectives in this chapter. To examine what is revealed about the Lamb, Jesus Christ, and what he's accomplished through his death. To consider the impact this scene would have had upon the persecuted Christians in Asia. The scene that began <coughs> in chapter 4 continues. Whereas the theme of chapter 4 can be stated as God is on his throne, the theme of this chapter may be called Worthy is the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. John's attention is drawn to a scroll in the right hand of God. Written on the inside of the back, it is sealed with seven seals. A strong angel proclaims, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And at, that, at first there seems to be no one in heaven and earth deemed worthy to open the scroll or look at it. This prompted John to weep. Verses 1 to 4. But one of the 24 elders tells him not to weep, for one described as the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David. <laughs> That's in Genesis 49, 9 to 10, and Isaiah 11 and 10. Has prevailed, so to be able to open the scroll and loose its seals. In the midst of the throne and of the living creatures and the elders, John sees a lamb standing as, th as though slain. This is Jesus Christ. John 1, 29. With seven horns and seven eyes. The seven eyes are explained as the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Zechariah 4.10 As seen before, they represent the Holy Spirit, while the seven horns are indicative of great strength. Deuteronomy 33.17 1 Samuel 2.10 The Lamb is then seen as taking the scroll out of God's right hand. Verse 5-7 to seven, Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ is worthy. He's the one that can open the scrolls. Taking the scroll prompts the four living creatures and 24 elders to fall down before the Lamb, each possessing a harp, perhaps symbolizing praise, and golden bowls of incense which depict the prayers of the saints. They sing a new song, praising the Lamb as worthy to take the scroll. They proclaim His worthiness on the basis of being slain and redeeming by His blood those from every nation who are made kings and priests to God, who shall reign on the earth. 1 Peter 2.9 the voices of many thousands of angels around a throne then join in with their praises of the Lamb, who was slain as worthy to receive the power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Finally, every creature in heaven, earth, and sea join in with praise for both him who sits on the throne, God, and the Lamb, Jesus Christ, to which the four living creatures say, Amen, and the twenty-four elders fall down in worship, verses 8 to 14. This awesome scene should certainly encourage the faithful Christian. Praise the Lord. Such a scene was calculated to bring new courage and new hope to the hearts of John's first readers, the persecuted Christians of Asia. It brings the same cheer to Christian hearts in any age, believing in the power of God, we saw in chapter 4, and the redeeming love of God in chapter 5. There is no enemy or force of evil which Christians need to fear. They can enter the conflict or endure the evil knowing that God is still on his throne. He has not laid aside his scepter. He has not abandoned his throne to any other. And what does the scroll represent? The scroll is the book of the destiny of mankind. In it could be found the fate of the suffering saints, the outcome of Rome's machinations against the church, and an outline of the future from John's time through the resolution of the particular battle raging between his brethren and Satan's forces. The things revealed in the subsequent visions of the revelations were bound up in this scroll. The scroll reveals how God would manifest his righteous indignation upon those who rejected his Christ and persecuted his people. Also, how the suffering saints would eventually overcome. As long as the scroll was sealed, the workings of God were still a mystery. But as the seals are broken, we have the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. 1-1 one, one. The scroll is in God's right hand, verse 1-4. to four. Written in the inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals, the proclamation by the strong angel, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals. The initial response, no one in heaven, on the earth, under the earth, no one able to open the scroll or to look at it. John's reaction, so I wept much because no one was found worthy. The one worthy to open the scroll, verses 5 to 7. 
comforting words of the elder to John. Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, he has prevailed to open the scroll, to loose its seven seals. John's description of the lamb, standing in the midst of the throne, the four living creatures and the elders, a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns but seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent into all the earth, who takes a scroll out of God's right hand. Praise the Lord. Verses 8 to 14, the lamb is praised. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Jesus. By the four living creatures and 24 elders, verses 8 to 10, each having a harp, golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers to the, of the saints, they sang a new song. The lamb is worthy to take the scroll, to open its seals, because he was slain. He has redeemed them to God by his blood out of every tribe, tongue, people, and nation. He has made them kings and priests to God to reign on the earth. Praise the Lord. By thousands upon thousands of angels, verses 11 and 12, their voices heard around the throne, along with the living creatures and the elders, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, and blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Together with him who sits on the throne, verses 13 and 14, John now hears those in heaven, on earth, under the earth, and in the sea, saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb forever and ever, upon which the four living creatures said, Amen. And the twenty-four elders fell down and worshipped him, who lives forever and ever. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Imagine how it's going to be when we can fall at Jesus' feet and weep and grab his feet and just worship him and thank him for all he's done for us. That's going to be so awesome. It's going to be beyond description. All right, let's review the chapter. What are the main points of this chapter? The scroll and the lamb, verses 1 to 7. The lamb is praised, verses 8 to 14. What did John see in the right hand of him who sat on the throne? Verse 1. He saw a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. What did a strong angel proclaim with a loud voice? Verse 2. Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? How did John react when it seemed there was no one worthy to open the scroll? Verses 3 and 4. He wept. What did one say? What did one of the twenty-four elders then say to John? Verse five: Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open a scroll and its seven seals. What did John see? Verse six: A lamb, as though it had been slain, with seven horns and seven eyes. Where was the lamb? What did he do? Verses six and seven: In the midst of the throne. And of the four living creatures and the elders is where he was. What did he do? He took the scroll out of him who sat on the throne. What happened when the lamb had taken the scroll? Verses 8 and 9. The four living creatures and 24 elders fell down before the lamb. They each had a harp and golden bowls of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sang a new song. What did they proclaim in this new song? Verse 9. The lamb was worthy to take the scroll and open its seals. Why did they deem the Lamb worthy? Verses 9 and 10. For he was slain and redeemed them by God, to God, by his own blood. He has made them kings and priests to God. Thank you, Jesus. What did John then see and hear? Verse 11. The voice of thousands of angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders. What were they saying? Verse 12. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. What does John hear next? Verse 13. Every creature in heaven, on and under the earth, and in the sea, offer blessings, honor, glory, and power to both him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Verse 14. What happens then? The four living creatures said, Amen. The twenty-four elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. You guys noticed, now after we've gotten through the first few chapters, we're not hearing about the church anymore. You know why that is? Because we're in heaven. We're in heaven, man. Starting the seven year, the seven years of, of, of the marriage supper of the Lamb, getting our rewards, getting our mansions, hugging on Jesus, learning all about heaven. In those seven years, while well, seven years of hell is happening on earth in the Great Tribulation, where were Jesus promised to take us at? So mid and post tribbers. That's why you don't hear about the church anymore after the first couple of chapters. We're in heaven. <laughs> you're not going to hear about us again until later because we're not here. And if you're a post-tribber, 
you probably are still here because you don't believe in pre-trib. You might not be ready because you might be living in sin. Great stuff. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I love you so much. I thank you for your love and mercy. And thank you for giving us this wonderful, wonderful Holy Bible you've given us. Genesis to Revelation, verse, chapter, book, all 66 books. I praise you for Revelation. It's my favorite book. I love to read it. And I thank you for this uh, way to break it down to make it easy for everyone to understand. I pray that lives would be touched and there would be eyes opened and it would, the Holy Spirit would just breathe on everyone so they can understand it and see it clearly. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. And as always, I recommend after you hear this that you, that you pick up your King James Version Bible and read chapter 5. Let's have an altar call. If anyone watching this video does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life. And I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day. Went back to the right hand side of, Father, of the Father God in heaven. Since that time, you've been making a place in heaven for all Christians forever. Please forgive me of my sins, Jesus. Please cleanse my heart. Make me white as snow. Wash me new. Come live in my heart. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. If you pray this prayer, Jesus says in the Bible that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. But remember, that's the beginning of salvation. Okay? This prayer is in case... I always give this prayer in a video in case we can die any second of any day. A heart attack, an aneurysm, run over by a car. Anything can happen. The rapture can happen. I want everybody to be ready at all times. But once you get saved like you did now, if you prayed that prayer, then get a King James Bible. Start reading it cover to cover. Start praying every day. Reading the Bible every day. Find a church or a place to worship. Bring your Bible. Open it and read it to make sure they preach what's in the Bible. If they don't, run away. Make sure that you get water baptized. Pray for baptism of the Holy Spirit. Get involved. There's so many things to do. It's a, it's a lifelong process that ends either the rapture or your death. If you, want somebody, if you want me to pray with you, just send me a message. I, I promise you I'll get back with you. I have a lot of different ministries, but I will get back with you. Any questions at all, bring them to me. If you have a friend, neighbor, loved one, co-worker, anyone who does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if you're sick, a sick family member, friend, neighbor, co-worker, loved one, a sick pet, if you need a job, car, home, food, clothes, water, whatever you need, you'd like someone to pray with you that believes and has faith, send me an inbox or a private message. The Holy Spirit, God, I, I prayed and God gave me the gift of faith. Praise the Lord. Nothing I did, he gave it to me. I have mustard seed faith now. I'll pray for you, believing in my heart. I'll speak with my mouth and I know that God will answer all my prayers if I pray in his holy will. He'll do the same for you, my friends. Test him. His word never returns empty. I know this because I get hundreds of prayer requests all around the world. People praying for miracles in their lives. And God answers those prayers through his slaves, through his humble servants' faith and belief and heart, all through the power of God, through the Holy Spirit. Because see, my friends, I'm a nobody. I'm nothing. I'm a tiny little fish in a huge pond. I'm a slave to Jesus Christ. I'm the least in his kingdom. But the Holy Spirit runs powerfully in me. He runs through my veins, runs down to the cellular level. And I got that mustard seed faith. Praise the Lord, and I use it. I don't sit on it. Thanks for watching this video. Please share this video, other videos with a link to this channel with friends, neighbors, co-workers, loved ones. With strangers, drop into the blog or somewhere online. Plant the seed and walk away and let God water it so it can grow. People have to hear the old-fashioned word of God preached away. It's preached here and a few other places on YouTube. There's not many of us that preach it this way anymore. Only a few of us do, and it's really, really sad. It just breaks my heart. But I just pray that you just get the word out so people can be saved. They can be repenting of sins and iniquities. They can be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. They can have miracles happen in their lives. They can get off the sidelines and help reap the harvest. Just get out there, my friends. we got to get going right now. Time's almost up. We don't want to be taking any chances of not being able to reach anyone before the rapture. I love you guys. I pray for you every day. I pray that God bless you. And as always, I give all praise, honor, and glory to God for everything accomplished in any of my ministries. Thank you. Good night.